Hi, right, what's up everybody? Today we're going to be going over how to speed up your internet for free. Uh, when I posted my last video telling you what speed tier you should get when you're signing up for internet, I saw when I was typing in all my little keywords that a lot of people are searching for how to speed up their internet uh, for free. So this is not an exhaustive list. This is just what I know from my experience, ways you can speed up your internet for the free ski. So let's get into it now the first thing you need to know is what you have uh you need to know before you even get in this if you even have fast internet um most places if you live in a major city uh offer like 100 or 200 megs really like 200 megs is standard now uh, like the lowest tier uh so you need to know what package you have so you're gonna need to look at a bill or you know uh, if you haven't well, if you're watching this video, you already got the internet. So you just need to look at the bill or just your service agreement or something to see what it is that you have. Most of the time, um, most people are logging in and paying for their bill online. So you just log in and pull it up and it should tell you exactly how many megabits per second you should be getting. Uh, once you've established what you have, you can go to btest.net and you could just do a test like right here it'll tell you exactly what who your isp is your internet service provider uh you see mine is verizon and we just click go here to test our speed so me i know i have 200 megabits per second uh service but my router is downstairs on the other side of the house all right so it, i'm not going to i already know i'm not going to get the full 200 megs because of the distance from the router. Uh, there's also a difference between 2G and five, two and a half gigahertz and five gigahertz. Five gigahertz is gonna give you faster internet, but it has a shorter uh, range. The two and a half can penetrate more through walls and stuff. So uh, that's another thing you can do, but let's stick with speed, okay? Cause I don't really like dealing with two and a half. So let's go with the five and let's go ahead and do our test now. All right, so my download was 124, which is not bad. I mean, for me to be so far away, and we can look in the lower right-hand corner, down here near the time, we see that I, I basically have one or two bars. We'll, we'll count the little circle as one, but I basically have two bars. So I, I have half, at least half my service. And my upload speed is 63.81. So let's do this real quick. I'm going to... So y'all know this is happening in real time here. We're going to go open up the door to the bedroom. So we're going to open up the door and see my door was closed. So like I said, the 5G has a hard time penetrating through walls and doors. So we're going to open it up and then run a test again. So we open up one door. I'm leaving all, I ain't adding none of this out because I want y'all to see this happening in real time. So now that the door is open, we're going to run the test again. Oh, I'm paying six now, that's interesting. So even with the ping being six, my download speed is 156 now. It was like, what was it, like 124 before? So it's significantly faster with the door open. My upload speed was like 61, I think. My upload speed was lower, which is strange, but we see the speed was higher. All right, so I also wanted to show you guys the speed when I moved the laptop close to the router. So that's what we're doing right now. And as you can see right here in the lower right-hand corner, I have all my bars. So let's go and see what that does. All right, you guys, now mind you, I'm paying for 200 megabits per second. This is usually the case uh, in every place I've ever lived. I always, when I'm close to the router or plugged in, I get way more than what I'm paying for. And wow, okay, so my upload is 266. That's high as I don't know what, okay? Comcast don't even do anything that fast. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to test this plugged in. And so I just wanted to show you guys all the different tiers. The first one, first test I ran were on the other side of the house. This one was just beside it. And now we're going to do plugged in. All right, now as you can see in the lower right hand corner, that thing changed to a computer with a cord. So that means I'm corded in. And what you need to do is disconnect from Wi-Fi though, because it, it still does both. And when you have both connected, you won't get a strong signal. I won't demonstrate that, uh, but you run into radio signals and it's not good. So don't do that. Make sure you connect it to one or the other. And now let's do it. Boom, 309. So right there, I mean, we see it right there. I'm paying for 200. And the crazy thing about Verizon is 300 is actually a tier. So I'm paying for 200. And when you wired in, you're going to get what you're really getting. I'm getting 309. And oh my goodness, my upload is 344. My upload speed is faster than my download speed. You're not going to get that anywhere else. All right, so your results are going to always vary. They'll never be exactly the same. And that's due to interference from other devices uh, that are in the house. But you should see an improvement the closer you get to the router. If you don't see an improvement the closer you get to the router, you may have problems with your router, which leads us to our next thing, which is connect directly to the modem via ethernet cable. Now, I have here as um, examples two different modems. Now, yours could look like this, especially if you have Comcast or something like that um, and you're not using Fios uh, or it could look like this. This is one that does telephone too. This is a telephone and cable uh, modem at the same time. But what you want to do is disconnect your router uh, if you have one and you want to connect directly using an Ethernet cable. The weird thing is a lot of devices these days don't have this anymore, but try to find something. Uh, like my laptop here has an ethernet cable. So I attach it to this and then attach it to the laptop. This will be the only thing connected to the internet. And then you run the speed test again. And that will give you your true speed. Do it a couple times so you have a nice average. And once you have that average, uh, you will compare that to what you're paying for. So if I'm paying 200 and I'm not getting 200, I'm getting what much less than that. I'm getting like 150 or whatever then you will call your internet service provider and tell them hey i'm having problems with my service i connected directly to the modem via ethernet cable and i'm not getting the speed that i'm paying for and they should come out and see what's going on you could have bad wiring it could be your equipment it could be a number of things now if you notice that your your internet speed improved once you got closer to the router one thing that you can do is move your router to a central location in your house um I mean, ideally, you want to like, we have three floors. We have the top floor, the main floor, and then the basement. So ideally, you want it in the middle of the house. Uh, and that's still giving you problems because you have, hot, you know, like dead spots when you have the door closed or whatever. You can get an extender. You can get a mesh system. Uh, or the extenders don't work as good as the mesh systems. But uh, another thing you could do is just get a more powerful router. And I'll leave some links in the description to some decent routers uh, and some decent mesh systems. Another thing you could do, uh, when my guy came out to install my Verizon Fios, like I don't have modems for Verizon Fios, I just have the routers. Did I say that? I don't have modems, I just have a router for <laughs> Verizon Fios and you might be in the same boat. So if you are, you would just, you know, do everything I said, you just connect directly to the router via ethernet cable instead of uh, doing it Wi-Fi. But if that is what you have, he recommended um, going on like Facebook Marketplace to find uh, used systems. You could always do that. The thing about used systems is a lot of people abuse their equipment and they don't know it. Like they keep these in enclosed spaces and they have these holes on them all around them so that they can breathe. When they overheat, they don't perform as well. They even have holes on the top. They don't have any on the bottom. But all around the thing, they have these holes to keep this thing cool. And most people keep them like next to the cable box, stuffed under the TV and in the entertainment system with the doors closed. 
and that's not re really where you want this thing. Ideally, you want it high up in an open space. Uh, that's why they make them different colors to match your decor because they're supposed to be in a very visible spot. Uh, but um, so definitely you want to try doing all those things before calling because you want to make sure it's not something you're doing wrong because if you call your ISP and complain about the speeds and they send a technician out, they'll charge you. But if it's their fault, like it's faulty wiring or something like that, then the onus is on them and they will cover the cost. So that's all I have. Hopefully this video was helpful and I'll see you guys next time.